Mike Medesa was born on April 30th, 1968 in Los Angeles, California and is an American professional poker player residing in Henderson, Nevada. Medesa's nickname of The Mouth reflects his reputation for trash talking at the poker table. He is also known for sometimes ruining hours or days of good play with a single misjudgment known as the Mike Matasau blow up or the Mike Matasau meltdown. Back when he was young, Matasau was often the target of bullying while growing up in Los Angeles, California and Las Vegas, Nevada. Mike was never afraid of voicing his opinions and stood up against the biggest and toughest kids in his neighborhood, sometimes ending up battered and bruised but never defeated. He had many interests building race cars, shooting pool or bowling. He managed to graduate through high school with the aim of becoming a mechanic. He ended up working for his family in a furniture store and throughout the years he founded an ever-growing interest in gambling. At the age of 18, while in Las Vegas Maxim Casino, he played video poker incessantly for hours until he suffered repetitive strains in both his arms and shoulders. This developed into a small obsession of Matasau as he started to steal money from his mom's wallet to keep on playing. Eventually, he ended up in Gamblers Anonymous meetings. This obsession ended up being for good as it gave him training for the future success in poker. Later on, Mike Matasau became a dealer at Sam Towns Casino and this helped his game as he observed carefully and picked up tips from the players. He used his time at the table to study the players and their techniques. Soon, his game improved and he entered a small local poker tournament which he promptly won. This is when Steve Samaroff, a professional poker player, took Mike Matasau under his wing. During this time, Matasau started playing games like Texas Hold'em and Omaha High Low and quit his job to try his luck at the table himself. The furniture store worker quickly picked up the game, moving up the poker ladder to 1020, then 2040 Limit Hold'em games spread daily at Binion's in downtown Las Vegas. Believe it or not, prior to the poker boom, the Binion's 2040 game was one of the biggest games in town. From that point on, Matasau's poker career and bankroll would experience a never-ending series of boom and busts that seems to continue to this very day. As he wrote in his eye-opening autobiography, Check Raising the Devil, Matasau was the king of losing $10,000 bankrolls. He routinely built up a 10k plus poker bankroll in the Binion's game, only to watch it vanish after a weekend of losing to football bets. All this time, Matasau supplemented his crazy bankroll swings through his steady dealing job, dealing poker at both Sam Towns and the Orleans Casino. His first cash was a big one at the 1997 WSOP playing in a $2,000 Limit Omaha High Low tournament, finishing second to Scotty Wynn and cashing over $81,000. The next year, Scotty and Mike met again at the 1998 WSOP when Mike paid one-third of Wen's $10,000 buy-in to the main event and Scotty won the whole event for a payday of a million bucks with Matasau making a good fortune of $333,000. He would win his first WSOP bracelet in 1999 at the $3,500 No Limit Hold'em event. In 2001, Mike had a very good run at the WSOP main event but got derailed by a bluff from eventual champion Carlos Mortensen. This caused a Mike Matasau blow up and he finished the tournament in 6th place. One year later, Mike won a second WSOP bracelet playing the $5,000 buy-in Omaha 8 or better tournament. A few years later, Matasau tried drugs for the first time at a bar at the Rio Hotel and Casino. The drug was ecstasy and was given to him by friends as a way to help him emotionally recover from devastation he felt after losing a tournament he just knew he was going to win. Unfortunately, that first hit of X would unknowingly have a huge impact on Matasau's personal life for years to come even as his professional life thrived. Drugs soon became a huge part of his life as the poker pro descended into a non-stop partying world full of high-stakes gambling, drugs and strippers. Mike Matasau admits to moving on the massive consumption of ecstasy towards consistent use of both meth and coke. He even played some tournaments while high. 
Yet whether on drugs or sober, Mike the Mouth began a remarkable run in the tournament poker world, becoming a hated but famous poker celebrity along the way. Mike Matisau entered the national poker consciousness in 2004 when the volatile mouth played the villain to the nicer, more mild-mannered amateur Greg Raymer. The mean insulting taunts towards Raymer and his emotional breakdown caught by ESPN cameras later after Raymer helped him bust from the tournament helped ESPN ratings while boosting Matisau to the ranks of the most interesting poker players to watch. But partying took over Mike Matisau and led to the toughest period in his personal and professional life when in 2004 he was sentenced to six months in the Clark County Jail on a drug charge after he refused to wear a hidden microphone to help the police catch more criminals. Jail was a lonely time for Mike and when he got out he had to rebuild both his life and his bankroll. Phil Helmuth helped him out as he loaned Mike $5,000 and Mike was able to get back to his winning ways at the poker table. Matasau soon went on a run, racking up a considerable amount of money playing under his dill pickle alias on Ultimate Bet. Helmuth and Matasau may tangle often on the poker tables, but Matasau had been always grateful to Helmuth for helping him out during his time of need. Upon being released from jail, Matasau was depressed and despondent. He soon switched to antidepressant drugs, a move that he credits with helping him to make the final table of the 2005 WSOP, finishing in 9th place for a payday of $1 million. Just 4 months later, he'd go on to win the WSOP Tournament of Champions against a talented field for another $1 million making Mike Matasau the first poker player to have ever won at least a $1 million in a poker tournament two different times in one year. Matasau constantly seemed indebted to others. After placing in 9th place at the 2005 WSOP for a million dollars, Matasau said that he wasn't that happy due to the fact that this money would just be going towards paying off his many debts anyway. Matasau may have had many debts, but he made sure he always pays them off eventually, no matter what. Another weakness of Mike Matasau is his tendency to tilt while playing online. According to Mike, this tendency has cost him millions of dollars over the years. It has gotten so bad that in the past, Matasau's friends have actually come over to his house and confiscated his laptop so that he can't play online. As with everything else that he does, when Mike is on his A-game, he can be a very tough and solid player online, however, when he tilts, he is easily one of the worst. High Stakes DB has 110,000 hands tracked on him playing between March 2007 and April of 2010, mostly from his mixed horse games. He's down $1 million in that sample. He has also dealt with being overweight, detailed on ESPN's broadcast of the 2007 WSOP. During that tournament, Mike had a $100,000 bet with Ted Forrest that he could go down to 181 pounds by June 3, 2008. Mike won the bet on June 3rd, weighing at 179 pounds. In 2010, Matasau made another prop bet with Ted Forrest. This time around, the mouth bet that Ted Forrest could not drop under 140 pounds in a time span of 9 weeks. Mike was convinced that this was impossible, but Ted Forrest had a lot of experience doing weight prop bets and he knew what he was getting into. At the start of the bet, he weighed in at 188 pounds. The amount they agreed on was not a small one as Mike offered 20 to 1 odds betting against Ted Forrest's $100,000 effectively putting $2 million on the line. This is where the problem started as Mike Matasau simply stated that he did not have that kind of money and could not afford to pay. In the poker community, these bets are done on a shake of the hand and Forrest, together with poker fans, was disappointed. Afterwards, Mike claimed that he had promised to pay in $5,000 monthly increments and, although Ted did not agree, the mouth stood firmly by his story. When the initial dust settled, both parties went quiet on the matter, so whether Mike is paying those $5,000 increments or they came to a different arrangement remains a mystery. At the 2008 WSOP, Marasa won a third bracelet in the $5,000 No Limit 2-7 draw with rebuys, defeating Jeff Lizandro heads up for the $537,000 first prize. Later in the same year, he finished 30th out of 6,844 players in the main event, making yet another deep run. 
Madisa won his fourth bracelet in 2013 in the $5,000 7 card start high low split 8 or better tournament, defeating Matthew Ashton heads up and earning $266,000. Also same year, he increased his bankroll by $750,000 thanks to the victory in the National Heads Up Championship against Phil Hellmuth. Overall, Matasau has cashed in WSOP tournaments 92 times for a combined total of $4.4 million. In 2014, Matasau suffered a thoriac spinal contusion, a back injury that led to a serious medical complication and made it impossible for him to play poker. Although he still tried to get in the mix, he just wasn't in shape, physically or mentally for long sessions. It had to get worse before it could get better. In the next few years, he went almost completely bankrupt, lost his house and found himself in a really bad place. But if there is one thing that Mike Massa learned over the years, it was how to deal with hardships. He wouldn't let any of it get him down. When he was finally ready, he got back to playing, starting from the micro stakes online. Gradually, he built up his bankroll and after a three-year hiatus, he was back in the World Series of Poker in 2016. Matasau is also disliked by many due to his coarse and sometimes rude personality. He is well known for teasing and mocking his opponents, never holding back his emotional outbursts and rudeness. His controversial persona has landed Matasau on numerous TV shows like High Stakes Poker and Poker After Dark and his best known TV appearance on the WPT Bad Boys of Poker 2 show where he finished second to Tony G. Despite his success on the felt and the fact he's been around for just as long as anyone else, Mike Matasau is still to be inducted into the prestigious Poker Hall of Fame despite being nominated many times. In fact, the mouth has been quite vocal about the Hall of Fame issue and he's not afraid to say he firmly believes he deserves a spot. Nowadays, he might not be the big shot he once was, but it's hard to imagine that Matasau would ever give up on poker on his own will. However, his bankroll is no longer as it once was and sponsorship chances are scarce these days. That's most likely why the mouth isn't as active in high stakes games where fortunes are made and lost on a single card flip. In fact, Times have been tough for the mouth lately and he's been pretty open about it on his Twitter. Matasau revealed that he had only around $20,000 to his name at the time when the Nagrano Polk heads up match was on and he evidently staked a big amount of his net worth on Daniel to win. That did not improve his financial circumstances at all. Despite this, Mike gets to get into some of the excellent games in Las Vegas as he frequently tweets about. It's reasonable to assume he's been staked but the fact that he can get staked for 5100 is significant. Matasau has also been quite active on the tournament circuit so he still plays a bit of poker for someone who claims to be broke. Since his chances to actually play in high stakes games have been reduced, Mike Matasau decided to focus more on his other passions and, thanks to modern technology, he could finally do it in style. Early in 2019, he launched his Mouthpiece podcast allowing him to share his thoughts on the current issues in the poker world and share his stories and interview many interesting guests over the past couple of years. The podcast has been going on strong since 2019. There are now over 70 episodes available on his YouTube channel and various podcast sharing platforms as he seems determined to keep going. Matasau is both widely hated and loved in the poker world. Some find his loud antics and blow-ups hilarious while others actually refuse to speak to him. Every category needs a bad boy, in this case, one whose talent with the cards does not go discounted. No matter how many times he gets kicked down, Matasau somehow manages to get back up on his feet every single time. So whatever comes next, one thing is certain, the mouth isn't going anywhere anytime soon. This video is powered by Bluff the Spot, the best place to learn how to win at poker from actual high-stake coaches like MMA Sherdog. Check the link in the description.